My name is Peng Xiao. I'm the EVP and CIO of MicroStrategy. And we are a leading open system, independent business intelligence provider. I remember 10 years ago when I went to Beijing, uh, along the way to, to and from the airport, you see many you know, advertisements for IT, different IT providers. 10 years ago was a lot of ads for HP, IBM, Dell on hardware. And uh, five years ago I was there, I saw a lot more ads about ERP. Um, you know, King D and Ufeda, different, you know, ERP providers. Then just a few months ago when I was in China, in Beijing again, I started to see more ads about information management consulting services. That's, I think, is a great example of evolution of data. Um, a company like ours, who has been in this business for a very long time, we tend to take for granted. But if you look across the board globally, um, many companies are going through the similar process China as a country is going through right now. That is, great, we build all this wonderful hardware, but what's the point? What, what do I do this for? I need information for better decision making. Information is a real asset of your company. So I think nowadays you'll discover more and more as we heard at this event, CIOs are actually focused on the job description they actually have, chief information officer not infrastructure or application or anything else. I think this is really taking information management to the next level now. Uh, again, IT professionals need to constantly strive to go to the next level of value add. And uh, if you look at the true value of IT professionals and solution providers, if our job really is defined as managing information, we should try to get away from a lot of the nightmares of managing data center, infrastructure, and, and even, even applications. Um, so in that way, um, I would say cloud computing is the right direction for us. However, I still believe this is at an early stage. Uh, as one of the CIOs mentioned at the table earlier, uh, even Amazon and Google have downtime, right? How do you really believe they can maintain your SLA from an infrastructure perspective? And more importantly, how do you safeguard your data? How can you be sure your data is not being misused? How can you be sure that information is not being dis disclosed to the wrong people? I think that will remain a challenge. It will take time for us to get comfortable and gain trust of these vendors. But I do believe to start with, we probably will explore as, as IT professional CIOs more of a private cloud concept leveraging technologies like VMware to start um, dynamically provision your IT resources inside your own data center before you move into external cloud. It's important before you even start to provision a system, build a new application, or purchase a stack from a particular vendor out there, you got to ask this question, what is the information needs of your organization? you define how you want to run your business and what data elements and information you need to support running your business. You start with that sort of, to simplify it, you start with sort of reporting requirements. Then you work your way backwards to build your application, to build your backend data model, to build the systems that run all of them and to build a network that connect all of them. My name is Tony Young. I'm the Chief Information Officer for Informatica. And the way to think of our company is that there's, there's just data challenges that exist within companies overall. And what we do is we take uh, this fragmented data that exists in silos and we bring it together and, and, and integrate this to make, the, to make the data more valuable for enterprises in general. The reality, what's really important for us as businesses and way, where we are competing is based on information. You know, information is how we can actually have better process within companies. Information is how we can better serve our customers. And if you think about all those business initiatives that we want to do, and how do we you know, do better M&A, how do we have better customer intimacy, it's all based on information, your ability to capture the information products. And so MDM is that ability to have that single version of the truth that we finally agree upon what is a customer. This is becoming top of mind for people because they realize that, you know, uh, I've, done, I've done BI, 
but the problem is my data still isn't good. In fact, BI exposed bad data that exists in my organization. Or I've done BI, we have visibility. The challenge is we don't always agree upon what that data is. And so that's why MDM is becoming more important. And, and, and even BI is still important because of it's exposing a lot of the challenges behind the data. Um, a BI, in, in one respect, is only as good as the data that you have behind it. It's a key component to governance, and we talked about looking at governance in general. There's data ownership, there's data stewardship, there's, little, there, there's different roles. And one of the keys, of course, is making sure that type metrics are baked back into people's job descriptions, because oftentimes these things uh, fail over time because nobody's actually personally measured. So, but those personal measures have to be tied back to actual tangible measures of the quality of that information. So. Uh, one of the key uh, tenets of data governance is being able to come in into your governance meetings. And there's a couple of different types of meetings, but being able to display the dashboards on where do we stand relative to what we agreed upon. And it just exposes the quality issues and then it goes back to people's performance and saying, are you managing the data? Are we actually actively making sure that this living asset that exists in our company, is it important?